Okay, so in this video, let's take a look at how we can approach um, solving some of these quadratic expressions or looking at the properties of quadratic expressions um, in, in, in terms of um, how their uh, parabolas are opened um, or closed, um, something called expansion or compression, um, coordinates of the vertex, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and then looking at domain and range. And also um, how we could go about this, um, doing it manually and also looking at a, at a graphing tool for it. So we're going to look at question number one here, which is how to um, plot this graph y equals 3x squared. So the first thing we should do, or you should try to recall, is what is the form of um, the general format for a quadratic function as taught in this unit? So the format of the, of the function is that y is equal to a value which we call a um, times x minus h and, and, and the value x is the variable h is a, an, another value um, squared plus k all right where k is just also another value so here we have a h and k k are just all um, integers of some variety all right so if we look at what question number one is the the expression here uh, i'll just put it in the box here is y is equal to 3x squared so if we look at that how could we rewrite that expression such that it is in the form that i've written here in the one below okay so we could write it as follows here y is equal to now the the value for a is the number three okay because that's what's the number in front of the the x squared term but now the x minus h, we don't have a value for h there. So what you have to do is you have to understand that this is just x minus zero. Okay, so the number for h is zero um, because x minus zero would just be essentially x by itself. But, but we do want to include this term as having a zero. And then we're, we don't have any term plus after that. So again, we can just write that as plus zero. So this is the form of the parabola um, that gives us enough information here to understand where a lot of these properties are. Okay, so if we look at the first case here, so part A, um, how do we know, what is, how is the factor of this parabola compare? Is it expanded or compressed vertically um, given by that number? Okay, so when A is greater than one, okay, not, I mean, not a fraction, so in this case it's three, Okay, the parabola is actually expanding vertically. Okay, so this is vertically expanded. Okay, and I think what we'll do is when I go to the graphing tool, we'll kind of clarify what vertically expanded means and what compression means. But in this case, we just identify this as three. Okay, so x, so that's greater than one, so we're gonna say that's expanded. The next thing here is what are the coordinates of the vertex? So we know the vertex is the lowest or the highest point on the parabola, right? So the vertex is always given by the coordinates for h and k. So um, the vertex in this case, because it is zero and zero, okay, in this form, minus zero and plus zero, we just say the vertex is at zero, zero. That means the lowest point on this parabola can't, was going to be right at the origin of the um, of the curve okay so with that we can actually start to kind of think about how we could graph it so we know the vertex is at zero zero so I'm just gonna put a dot here on the graph at zero zero and then we're looking to find out the x-intercept if any exist okay well if the lowest point is at zero zero here um, would we have an, an x-intercept? Does this parabola actually cross the x-axis? Okay, and the answer in this case would be no because we can't have a point lower than zero. Okay, that's our vertex. Now, when you start to do this um, question like this, I would actually just maybe make a small table of values here. So we can just do x and y, and we can just make some values here and plot them as we go along. So what we can do is we know, we'll put in x is zero, and then let's try x is one, and then x is negative one, and then we'll do two and negative two. And that should give us enough points to get a feel for how the shape of this curve looks. So when x is zero, we plug that back into our original equation, the one that I have in green, and y will be equal to zero, because three times zero will give us zero. 
Then we take x is equal to 1, so we square that. That's going to be 3 times 1, and then y will be equal to 3. Then if we put in negative 1, we square negative 1, which is positive 1, and then we times it by 3, so we're going to get 3 again. Okay, and if we do 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, okay, and negative 2, and that's going to give us also 12. All right, so what we can look at here is I can put one point here, is 0, 0, then I can go out to 1 and 3 and put a dot, and then negative 1 and 3. All right, and then if we want to add 2 and 12, 12 is going to be just off the curve a little bit here. It's going to be a bit higher, okay, and then negative 2 and 12 is here. So you can see that this, if we were to draw the parabola shape, you know, which I'll put in here in a different color in green, okay, it's very, very steep, turns sharply at the origin, okay, and then goes back up, okay, and that is the way that you could um, ex to, to graph this um, once you have the, the formula kind of all, kind of rearranged a little bit where you, you know how to, uh, to find the vertex, because the vertex is key for this one, and also the fact that the parabola opens upward Okay, that's also important, and that upward um, direction is determined by the number 3. Okay, because it's a positive number, positive 3, that means the parabola opens upward. If it was negative value, it would open downward. All right, and then the rest of the equation here is, so there are no x-intercepts in this case here. So we can, for c here, we can say there are no x-intercepts. Okay, the parabola is not low enough, it shifted down or low enough so that it cr crosses the, the graph at any one point, the x-axis. So we'll just leave it as saying no. And then the domain and range. So the domain always refers to the x-coordinate or the x-values. So the domain for this is that um, it can be all numbers, positive or negative. So x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, um, all real values. Okay, and then the range refers to how the y coordinate cha um, changes. And when we look at the graph that we've sketched, okay, the y coordinate um, does not go below zero. So that means y um, is essentially going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and again, that is a set for the set of all real numbers. So we can just say y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's one way that we could answer this question. Um, and then we would just apply this technique into further problems. But before I, um, I leave this one, we're just going to look at how we could do this in a graphing tool. So a tool that I like to use that's free to use is something called Desmos. Okay, I'm just going to erase and reset my graphs here. So you can get this on the web um, or you can get it as an app for any devices. And what this lets you do is type in equations and then graph them. Okay, so I start up my, uh, my tool here. It's the, the application program. I just open up um, the side here, open up a row and I tap or click into the row. And then you get a keyboard here where you're allowed to type in essentially all these equations. Okay, so I want to graph Y equals, okay, so I have the letter y, the variable y, I want to graph 3x squared. So I just put in the number 3x, and then I use this the square function here to do a square. All right, and then this instantly will graph this parabola. Okay, and you might have to shrink it out a little bit just to kind of get the full idea of it here, but you can see that here's the typical shape of the parabola. Okay, and you can also look at how quickly the numbers really, really expand upwards. Okay, we're going from zero to 200,000 right away here. Okay, so, so this is, so if we looked at how we graphed our original parabola, we, we started with numbers like that are in the ones. Okay, so one is going to be like right sort of halfway in between zero and two here. Okay, so, and then you can, you can trace on this curve and you can get approximate values of where things go. So this is a very interesting way for you to, to kind of graph it. Now what's handy with this is that you can you can compare graphs. So remember we said we wanted to know what is the 3 do with the 3x squared. So we could just graph the um, simpler equation of this, y equals x squared, 
Okay, and you can see now the two differences here. So the purple is the regular one. And let me just hide this here. The purple is the regular y equals x squared. And the green is y equals 3x squared. So you can see that we're getting a more vertically compressed um, graph because um, it's a much steeper shape than, than the regular parabola, which is in purple. All right, and then we could also just take one step further here. We could graph something that is a fraction of that. So we could say, let's say a half x squared. So we can go y is equal to um, 0.5 x squared. Okay, and then we'll put that in black. So then you can see here in this case that the black curve, okay, is got, um, it's got a vertical compression. It's flatter, okay, it's wider. Okay, then the original curve there. So this would be a family of curves all with the vertex at zero, okay, where we have just changed the values from three to one, because remember there's a one in front of the x squared and then 0 0.5. Okay, and if we wanted to see what happens if we made it negative, um, we could just take one of the equations, I can delete one of these here, and I can put in a negative three, okay, and then you can see right away that the negative three creates the downward facing parabola where the vertex is at the maximum, okay, at zero, zero. Okay, so that, give, that, that illustrates the difference between having a positive three and then a negative three here in the curve. Okay, so hopefully that um, helps you out with this question. Um, I will look through a few of the other problems and we'll kind of work through them. But this is um, a way for you to, to examine how to do this question, not only just manually, Okay, and then plot something, but also to look at it with a computer or a graphing tool um, that's easily accessible and it lets you start to understand a little bit more of how the math works.